Okay, so this is a protocol for extracting genomic DNA from just about anything. Uh, mostly I use it with um, either myself or with my dogs. Um, there are all kinds of buffers and columns and uh, special things you can get to extract genomic DNA for PCR, for genotyping, um, but they're like ridiculously overpriced for what it is. Uh, the simplest, cheapest, and most reliable way that I've found has been uh, a pretty old protocol, but a really great one. So you just need two chemicals. You need um, uh, sodium hydroxide and you need a tris base. Both can be found online, super cheap. eBay is usually a good source for bulk chemicals like that. Uh, sodium hydroxide is basically lye and tris base is a super common buffer that's used for everything. And you're gonna use a really, really, really small amount. So the general protocol is you're going to do a cheek swab, add the DNA to the um, lysis buffer, which is gonna be the sodium hydroxide, boil it, uh, uh, add tris base to dilute it out and buffer it, boil it, use that for your PCR template, run PCR, have it sequenced, and then there you go. You've either got a gene that you've been trying to copy out of a genome, which you can use, you can subclone into something else, you can put it in a different organism, you can do all kinds of things, or you've got uh, just genetic information. And all in all, everything included PCR, uh, Sanger sequencing, all of that, you can usually get this for like 12-ish dollars per reaction, depending on where you go and, and, and what how much work you do ahead of time. But that's really good when you compare it against uh, trying to get sort of a commercial kit. They can get kits for a lot of genes, but not everything. So that's one advantage of being able to do it yourself. There's a little more setup cost because you have to have a PCR machine and things like that. But the advantage is, say you're a breeder and you want to genotype all of your animals. You're looking for a specific gene, something you're breeding for or against. Well, you can test every animal for pretty cheap. So instead of spending 70 to $100 per animal to test for something, which doesn't seem like a huge savings if you're just testing one dog, it's not worth the setup cost. But if you have 100 cows you need to check for something, or generations of dogs, or if it's uh, something that they don't offer a test for, because with this you can test for just about anything. And that's what makes it really, really powerful. You can test for almost anything, you can do it over and over and over again, uh, and it's really cheap. So, the first thing is you have to break open the cells. Uh, so we're going to start by prepping our buffers. So we're not going to use sodium hydroxide as a dry powder, we're going to be using it uh, diluted in water. Because this is basically lye, and so when you dilute it in water it becomes a strong base, and that helps break open the cells and expose the DNA inside. Uh, so we need to add a specific amount. The quantity is 50 micromolar for both of these. Now they have different molecular weights, so without getting into moles and molar mass and uh, you know, what any of that means, there's plenty of resources for that online. I'll just go ahead and tell you, I've already done the math for you, so it's 100 micrograms per 50 ml. So a tube this size gets 100 micrograms and then you fill it up the rest of the way with water. So this one, Tris Base, is about three times heavier. So you can go with 300 micrograms. It's like 306 micrograms, but it's close enough. So, uh, 300 micrograms in a 50 ml tube like this and the rest filled with distilled water. And that's important, use distilled water. Uh, it doesn't have to be fancy distilled water, you can just get it at like the gas station or the grocery store or whatever. So, um, mixing those two is gonna be your first step. I'll do that now. And just to give you a sense of how small an amount of each chemical there are, uh, this is 100 micrograms and this is 300 micrograms. So make sure that your scale will read down at least a couple of points past uh, the gram range, right? So you want it to be like grams down to zero, zero. And even that's only so accurate. If you have a scale that doesn't read this accurately or you're concerned about accuracy, uh, one thing that you can do is make a 10x buffer. So you make it 10 times more potent. So one gram is three grams, dilute that in water and then do a dilution 10 to 1 of the other. So you take another 50 ml tube, you put uh, 5 mls into the new tube from the original stock, and then you dilute it all the way back up to 50. All right, so now that everything's diluted, it'll take a little longer to dilute the tris base. So 
just plan on that. Take me a second, but it's okay because you use the sodium hydroxide first. Now, this stuff's not the worst thing to handle. Probably should use gloves. Um, it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's pretty aggressively basic. Do not get this stuff in your eye or whatever. So this is a pH test strip. I'm gonna show you real quick how aggressively basic this stuff is. So it like instantly goes like as far as you can go on the scale, right? So the pH on this stuff is like 14. So just be careful with it. Um, now, first thing you're gonna wanna do is get yourself 300 microliters. So 300 microliters on the pipette. Sodium hydroxide at 50 millimolar. Now you're ready to collect cells. Okay, so now I'm gonna collect cells. So this is just a standard Q-tip. It's just one of the sterile ones with the wooden stick, but super easy. Harley's gonna volunteer today. Just like rub around in her cheek, kind of give it a spin. I usually get the other cheek. Dogs have a lot of cheek, so that makes it easy. Okay. So then you just take it put it in the vial with sodium hydroxide and just sort of spin it until it sort of starts to get cloudy. You'll see a lot of the cells starting to come out of the Q-tip um, and just sort of let all those cells go. And it may take a second, so just give it a second. Uh, one thing I like to do is uh, just kind of aggressively swirl and then just kind of squeegee it up against the side squeeze out any excess but you'll see the quantity will go down because the q-tips dry and it'll absorb a lot of the sodium hydroxide but as it does it'll start releasing whatever cells are just kind of stuck on it but okay so the overall quantity will go down you know it won't be quite 300 anymore but it'll be you know cloudy and you'll be able to see you know sort of particulates floating around in there. Next step is to boil it. Uh, and you can do that. Normally what I do is I use one of these guys and I just stab it through, float it on the pot of boiling water. Uh, or you can take it and um, put it in a flask. You can hang, I've hung it from wire and dangled it in a kettle. Whatever you wanna do, you can take a styrofoam plate, stab it through the styrofoam plate and you know, float that on some boiling water. There's a lot of options, but you want it to boil for 10 minutes. Um, that's gonna help uh, really accelerate the sort of caustic action of the sodium hydroxide into breaking those cells down, breaking open the nucleus, exposing all the DNA just loose in the solution. Okay, so now the boiling is done, you know, and it's cooled down to room temperature. Time for the next step, again, 300 microliters, same as before, except this time we're gonna be using the Tris base. And that's it, it's really that easy. So, so, you know, invert it a couple of times, and then this becomes your DNA template. So from here you build your PCR reaction, use one microliter of this when you're doing your PCR. So, two microliters of your primer, you know, depending on the concentration of your uh, tack, however much you need to add, there's 5x tack or 2x tack or whatever, um, enough water, one microliter of this is usually more than plenty. It seems like it wouldn't be very much because, you know, the cells are very diluted now, but a little bit of DNA goes a long way with PCR. So after this little extraction, which takes, you know, once you have your buffers prepped, most of the time is boiling, so 15 minutes probably. Uh, take that, pop it in your PCR, run PCR, and there you go. You'll need to run the product out on a gel, which I have a video on running a gel, I have videos on PCR, on primer design, a lot of those other things, so I'm not gonna go into all of that for now. Um, I also think I have a video. If not, I'll get a video out on uh, ordering Sanger sequencing and uh, reading the results. But for the most part, whatever it is you're trying to extract from human 
animal. I've even used this protocol on plants and fungus. So it's really broad, easy, cheap, accessible genomic uh, uh, extraction protocol. And it makes genotyping dogs super, super easy because the primers cost, probably cost you about $15 to get a custom pair of primers made. And you'll have enough to do thousands of reactions. Um, TAC is probably the most expensive uh, uh, TAC polymerase, probably the most expensive reagent involved in the whole process. Uh, and it's pretty cheap depending on where you get it. Um, you know, these chemicals are so cheap, it's not even worth mentioning their costs, um, especially considering the quantity that you use. Uh, and the Sanger sequencing, depending on where you get it done, uh, can run anywhere from like $6 to $12. But generally speaking, it's super, super affordable and you can run it over and over again. You can check for specific mutations. You can uh, extract genes that you want to use in other projects. You can take the PCR product of this and you can use it for um, subcloning into a plasmid and express it in another organism. You can pull a gene out of a dog and put it in a mouse, all kinds of things. Um, but the beginning of a lot of different projects, uh, and in my case, more is it's more, in my case, it's more about genotyping. So it's more about um, reading the DNA so you can learn about a sp specific animal. Or especially if you're trying to, say, select against or for a specific trait in a litter of puppies. You've got 12 puppies. If you spent $40 genotyping each and every one, you're gonna rack up a lot of money, especially if you spent that doing um, litter after litter after litter for generations. But if you can do it for 10, 15, 20 bucks, then you save a lot of money in the long run. So uh, this is a really powerful protocol, and especially if there is no test for it, uh, if there's not like a standard uh, test that you can get, it really, really adds up because you're asking someone to do basically what I'm doing, except they're gonna charge you a lot more than you would get it for doing it yourself. Um, not intimidating, not scary, totally doable.